I am fascinated by mechanical movements, combining linkages, cams, and gears in innovative and interesting ways to transform simple motion into beautiful, complex movement. And I've demonstrated all kinds of mechanisms on this channel before, but one thing has always bugged me. How do you demonstrate visually what a mechanism is actually doing? Well, by building something like this, of course. This machine uses a conveyor belt coated in glow-in-the-dark pigment to plot the output of mechanical mechanisms. That's right, it's a mechanism for visualizing mechanisms, and it combines CAD, code, and so much more into a project that was supposed to be simple, but absolutely kicked my butt. Let's get started. This is the Engineer's Illustrated Thesaurus. It's a book that catalogues hundreds of mechanical movements and engineering componentry, and I absolutely love it. It's a goldmine of inspiration when it comes to industrial design projects, like this incredible expanding mechanism that I decoded and then turned into a mechanical lockbox. For mechanisms like that, they look super impressive on their own, but when it comes to differentiating between different kinds of reciprocating mechanisms, for example, a crank, sun and planet gears, or scotch yoke, it's a little bit harder to tell the difference between them other than haha <laughs> stick go up and down. But there are meaningful differences between them which you can only see if you plot it on a graph of amplitude over time. You can simulate this kind of thing, sure, but I wanted something that's visual, striking, and most importantly, tangible, almost like some kind of mechanical sculpture. I thought long and hard about how to do this mechanically, and originally I was just gonna use a roll of paper and a marker to plot the output as the paper moved. Something kind of like a seismograph or electrocardiograph. And I even picked up this old school EKG from the tip, but it's honestly too cool to pull apart for this project and the readout would be way too small anyway. Besides, drawing on paper would be pretty wasteful. I'm not interested in recording and cataloging a long period of data. I'm just interested in showing the movement output of the mechanism, then having that slowly fade away. And that's when I remembered this incredible project from one of YouTube's most inspirational individuals. Devon from Make Anything has always made incredible, whimsical projects, and Pendulous is one of my all-time favorites. It employs what's known as a double pendulum, which creates wildly unpredictable, mesmerizing movement. And to plot this chaotic path, Devon used glow-in-the-dark paint and an ultraviolet LED. It's beautiful to watch, and that effect is exactly what I'm after, so make sure you go watch his video on Pendulous after this, because it's a classic. For my design, instead of a large flat surface, I want to use a conveyor belt coated in glow-in-the-dark pigment, with the conveyor belt providing the time component to the graph and showing the mechanism output before slowly fading away as it comes back around to the start again. And as it turns out, glow-in-the-dark materials are actually really easy to get. There's glow-in-the-dark paper, glow-in-the-dark paint, even glow-in-the-dark filament. But for my purposes, I figured that this glow-in-the-dark adhesive vinyl would be perfect. And it was only a few bucks off AliExpress. I'll be honest, this stuff glows way more than I even expected. Using the UV mode on this little torch gives it enough energy to see the glow clearly, even in a well-lit room. So I reckon we're onto a winner. So here's the plan. I want the conveyor belt to be powered by a stepper motor and controlled precisely using a potentiometer, which I can accurately dial in at speed to match a separate stepper motor and speed control combo, which will animate the mechanism I want to test. It sounds simple, and for a lot of people, it probably is, but admittedly, I am terrible at combining code and electronics. In fact, I haven't done anything like this since back in university when I made my prototype cake icing 3D printer, and that worked fantastically. No, stop. Mechanically, the design is pretty straightforward. The rollers were printed upright on the bamboo layer bay one, and they have these cheap skateboard bearings pressed into place, which ride on eight millimeter steel rods. One is driven by the step motor with an integrated gear reduction, and it simply presses into place. I already wanted to use laser cut acrylic for the frame, and I spent way too long creating this design full of tabs and slots to locate the panels before securing into place on 3D printed mounts. I absolutely love the aesthetic of these matte black panels, but acrylic has one major drawback. It's brittle, incredibly brittle. 
You can try to mitigate stress rises in your design, but it only takes one shock or an over tightened screw to crack the whole thing apart. And well... Yeah, but it was all going so well. Well that for sure shows me for thinking I could get this simple project done in the first pass, but no, version 2 is much better. It uses 3D printed components, but for the buckle design, it's made up of cheap M10 threaded rod. I couldn't believe how cheap this stuff is. Less than seven bucks for three meters of it. Someone should, oh, I don't know, make a 3D printer using this stuff. But there is a catch because of course there is. Standard M10 hardware doesn't work with it. The galvanized coating is so rough and thick that normal hardware just binds up. Instead, you need to use special galv nuts with it, which have more clearance than usual. But even still, they were binding up randomly along the length, which isn't too surprising as they're just stored out in the open and get all dinged up. So I threw together this little thread chasing jig, which uses two printed gears, and one has an integrated angle grinder nut on it with an M10 thread, which I used to rapidly run down threaded rod length using a cordless drill to drive it. And you know what? It actually worked really, really well and cleaned up the threads nicely. With that sorted, it was thankfully nice and straightforward to assemble the thing using a combination of 3D printed components and nuts to hold them at a set distance along the threaded rod. It's probably just as well that the original design exploded because it's only at this stage I realized that it wouldn't have allowed for the kind of adjustment needed to tension the conveyor belt correctly. Because of course, it wasn't straightforward to make that either. The vinyl and its backing has a waxy surface by design and that meant that tape refused to stay adhered to it. So in the end, I just applied the entire sheet to some butcher's paper and then cut that to size for the belt. Because the threaded rod can accommodate to any size, I just made it as long as possible, and it's pretty crude with an ugly seam, but it seems to work fairly well. If you have any ideas of how to make a seamless glow-in-the-dark belt, however, please let me know in the comments below. I would love to improve its look. And that's the mechanical side of things done. Now we just need to control it and write some code. My favorite. Initially, I experimented with this dirt cheap ESP8266 board with a really neat built-in OLED screen. And I got pretty far along before discovering that it only has one analog input pin or ADC. And that'd be good enough to read one of the potentiometers, but you can't easily double the setup without having to change the approach or getting complex and way out of my depth with multiplexing. So back to the Arduino we go with these tiny little Arduino nano things that have more than enough ADCs and I can't believe how cheap this stuff is now. It is seriously so accessible. To drive the stepper motors, I went with some A4988 stepper motor drivers, mostly because I had them lying around and discovered pretty early on they don't like being fed 12 volts straight into the VCC. Mm -hmm. So, good thing I had spares. It's pretty crazy to think that these primitive drivers ran most 3D printers on the market for years. They were the best you could get for a really long time. With a simple current limit you dial in yourself using a little potentiometer on board and a multimeter and a maximum of 16 micro steps, which sounds a lot, but modern drivers can do up to 256 micro stepping. But they're super cheap and easy to control. All you need are two pins from your microcontroller to control the step and direction. You connect the step motor to four motor pins and you need to get these right. There are two pairs, one coil being connected to 1A and 1B and the other to 2A and 2B. I have an entire drawer of step motors and cables that have cannibalized from 3D printers over the years and let me save you some suffering. There is no standard whatsoever for pinouts. I had to use my multimeter to probe and test each and every motor and cable because it just so happens that out of the three motors I randomly grabbed, all three were wired to the four pin connector differently. Like I said, simple project, many, many challenges. After much trying, failing and learning, this is what I managed to bodge up. Each motor is controlled by its own potentiometer and the code has the RPM of the motor mapped to a range. I can't take any credit for this code. I did try to write my own, but the motors never initialized properly. So if you want to play with controlling step motor drivers using the Axel stepper library, I found that this tutorial from How to Mechatronics to be incredibly valuable. This circuit runs off a 12 volt DC power supply and uses a 7805 linear regulator to drop their voltage down to five volts for the logic so I don't blow everything up again. And fun fact, I've had this particular 7805 since I was 18, and I know that because I stole it from my old work. 
Okay, it looks absolutely terrible, but you know what? It works, and I am very proud of it. But there are much more pretty ways of creating custom circuit boards, and that's where today's sponsor comes in, PCBWay. I may be a beginner at circuit and PCB design, but I've used PCBWay's CNC services in many past projects on the channel to make awesome things I simply wouldn't have been able to otherwise. And when it comes to electronic projects, PCBWay makes it easy to create your own custom circuit boards in a huge range of sizes, colors, and finishes. You simply enter the board size, choose what kind of PCB you want, and upload your Gerber file. And they were kind enough to share 20 exclusive coupons just for this video, which gets you $10 off any order over $30. I'm currently teaching myself the basics of PCB design to use PCBWay services to give this project the polish it deserves. So if you're interested in using their services for PCB design or CNC manufacturing and many, many other things, you can check them out in a link in the video description below. But until then, the prototype circuit runs the machine just fine. It's fragile, it's finicky, but it works. So without further ado, Let's see what kind of mesmerizing patterns this machine can do when I hook up various mechanisms to it. I will be using this mechanism visualizer to demonstrate a huge range of interesting mechanisms on this channel this year, so be sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss it. If you want to build one for yourself, then you can find the files over on the Makers Muse community, where you get access to behind the scenes content, troubleshooting help, and much more. A big thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video, you can learn more about them in the description below, and I look forward to catching you again very shortly here on Makers Muse. Bye.